Immediately when you arrive in the Sahara, for the first or the tenth time, you notice the stillness. An incredible, absolute silence prevails outside the towns and within. Even in busy places like the markets, there's a hush quality in the air, as if the quiet were a conscious force, which, resenting the intrusion of sound, minimizes and disperses sound straightway. Then there is the sky, compared to which all other skies seem faint-hearted efforts. Solid and luminous, it is always the focal point of the landscape. At sunset, the precise curved shadow of the earth rises into it swiftly from the horizon, cutting it into light section and dark section. When all daylight is gone and the space is thick with stars, it is still of an intense and burning blue, darkest directly overhead and paling toward the earth, so that the night never really grows dark. You leave the gate of the fort or the town behind, pass the camels lying outside, go up into the dunes or out onto the hard stony plain and stand a while alone. Presently, you will either shiver and hurry back inside the walls, or you will go on standing there and let something very peculiar happen to you. Something that everyone who lives there has undergone, and which the French call le baptême de la solitude. It is a unique sensation. It has nothing to do with loneliness, for loneliness presupposes memory. Here, in this holy mineral landscape lighted by stars like flares, even memory disappears. Nothing is left but your own breathing and the sound of your heart beating. A strange and by no means pleasant process of reintegration begins inside you, and you have the choice of fighting against it and insisting on remaining the person you have always been or letting it take its course. For no one who has stayed in the Sahara for a while is quite the same as when he came. Perhaps the logical question to ask at this point is, why go? The answer is that when a man has been there and undergone the baptism of solitude, he can't help himself. Once he has been under the spell of the vast, luminous, silent country, no other place is quite strong enough for him. No other surroundings can provide a supremely satisfying sensation of existing in the midst of something that is absolute. He will go back, whatever the cost in comfort and money, for the absolute has no price. <laughs>